Välkommen till podden Lev ditt drömliv med mig, Jan Andreas, gentleman's coach och life coach. Och med mig, Erik Olsson, primary health coach och livsstils coach. Vi samtalar om livsfrågor, optimal hälsa och äkta rörelseglädje. Vill du veta mer om oss så finns vi på sociala medier samt gentlemanscoach.com samt på tostrongarms.se So welcome again, we have a new exciting podcast together with uh, John Andreas and today we have a special guest or a special guest star even. We have Murdo Mackay who is a co-founder of Walk Feeling here in Gothenburg and Run Feeling and he's also been a football agent, he's been in the Royal Navy as a submariner, he's also a cancer survivor, he broke several legs and he also had a part in Derby Country. So, very much welcome to the podcast, Murdo. Well, no, I'm delighted to be here <laughs> and uh, it's great to have this opportunity. I mean, the whole podcast technology is very new to me, you know. I only learned how to cut and paste an email last week, so yeah. this is all new. Oh. But uh, I look forward to this experience. It is new for us also. <laughs> no, well, that's good. Listen, um, yeah. I think it's important because, particularly at this time, people... I have to be in the home world and this is a great way to share things with people and let them make the decision of yeah. what you share. Yeah, for sure. So, very exciting uh, and I'm very excited actually and, and I think we are both very curious and interested to hear sort of why you ended up being a co-founder to Walk Feeling and Run Feeling after a while, which you are today and also with your background story because when we did some uh, studies about you <laughs> yeah, yeah. and we talked to Tommy, your colleague and our friend, we kind of read a lot about your story and you've been through a lot of different experiences and some suffering in a sense as well, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, I think the thing is, is that in life I came, I came from the Highlands initially. The, the name Murdo is actually, I owe that to the Scandics, believe it or not. Um, because it comes, it means sea warrior. That's where the name originates from. And my brother done a test recently uh, on DNA composition and it transpires I'm 4% Swedish. So... Um, Congratulations. I, thank you. <laughs> High five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I would love to, I'd love to be able to speak the language. No, I mean, my, my life has been, uh, it's been interesting. It's been very interesting, you know, from being a submariner in the Royal Navy, where we were under the water for two months on occasion to the journey that was football, which involved a lot, it involved some pain and involved pleasure. Um, and uh, I, I done my coaching licenses. I love the game of football. I always have. Uh, what brought me to, to come into contact with, with, with Sweden was actually ironically football, because somebody had been in touch and known of my involvement in football and I spoke to this guy I'd never met before, and we had a conversation. Um, and I think I've softened a lot in the past six, seven years. I was very much stronger in my view then. And uh, Tommy was interested in what I was saying, and he phoned me the following Tuesday, and he said, look, um, I'd like to meet you. And I said, fine, I live in Spain, and he said, can I come down? And I said, of course you can. And he said, I said, when? And he said, Friday. <laughs> and he quite literally turned up on the Friday and we stood on a beach, uh, you know, about 20 kilometers from where I live. And we talked about what he had. And again, as I said to you, I was very direct then. Um, I said, look, you've got something here, but I'm not entirely convinced you know what it is. I says, I equate it to a bus that you have in a, a garage that can take people to where they want to go, but I don't think you know how to start the engine. Now, I thought this guy's going to hit me, <laughs> or he's going to agree with what I said. And it was, he didn't hit me, it was a combination of both. And I'd always kept fit, and I had uh, injuries in my life, as you've referred yeah. to. I had, I'd broken both my legs, the nose has been broken. 10 times, um, I nearly lost everything from the neck down, I've nearly died on two occasions, so I've not really treated my body with respect. And uh, the phrase that comes to mind is, if you listen to your body when it whispers, 
you won't have to hear it mm. scream. Now, I didn't listen, for sure, and in many times. And even as recently, the cancer thing, I could have listened a bit more than I did. Um, but what, and when I met Tommy, when I used to run, because of the injuries I'd had previously, I always got discomfort in my knees. You call you were telling me about your knees, John, having problems. I just accepted when I walked up the stairs to the flat that, that the knee just complained, right? It spoke, and it was saying, me no like. And Tommy said to me, he said, look, it needn't be like that. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, look, can I show you something? And I said, do it later. Do yeah. Because you know, egoistic, you know, uh -huh. I caught up in myself, and I said, no, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, which is, yeah, listen, it's embarrassing when you think about it now. And he said, no, come down. Uh, I went, oh, okay, Tommy. You know, and I went down. he done a couple of things. I walked up the stairs, nothing. And I went, that's, that is not possible. Right. Cynical. Back down the stairs, up the stairs, back down the stairs, up the stairs. I tried five times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he, I said, wow, this is, this is unbelievable. And through that process, I also recognised that, you know, through what happened, that this was a journey for me. For some reason, it was compelling. It was a journey I wanted to embark on. Because of what I'd experienced in my life, I, I feel I made a lot of mistakes. There was a lot of learning. Um, and I felt that there was part of me, I, there was something that I'd missed, and there was a part of me I didn't recognise. Mm. But for some reason I had a confidence in life, but I didn't recognise it. So I was kind of, in some ways, lost for all the things that happened through my life. So in this I just felt that like I don't want people to experience what I did in the way I did it. Because it doesn't just cause pain for you, it causes pain for others, and it does. Yes. And very much I, I said to myself, this is a mechanism for that. And I started working with people psychologically. At that uh -huh. time, I'd started for about a year before. I wasn't charging anything, I didn't have a lot. Um, and basically, it started to develop and I thought this is something that adds to that. Through these conversations we had, we, we, we ended up developing, creating what feeling and developing, run feeling. And that was nearly six years ago and uh, I'm grateful to the powers of the gods that be because uh, in so doing, I have I found me in a way I never understood and I've been able to help a lot of people and uh, I want to do that till I stop breathing quite frankly because mm. I love it you said you have become more softer how do you mean <laughs> 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 well I kind of had a very strong view um, and I think it would be the best way you could describe it is I was noise mm. I was mischievous I wanted to create the fun and be the noise but I, and when it was humorous, I don't know when the humour stopped. Mm -hmm. um, and when somebody had a view that I, I didn't feel was quite right, I would be very, con not physically caught, but I'd be very confrontational mm. and strong in mind. And I felt in that, that I couldn't, I didn't hear. Um, and somebody once said to me, you know, seven years ago when all this journey started, they said, through that noise there is a huge heart. Mm. And that always stayed with me. Um, and through developing a softness, which didn't happen overnight, yes. then I was able to learn so much. And I discovered that you learn more when you listen than when you mm -hmm. speak. Because mm -hmm. what you're doing is speaking from what you think you know. And when you listen, you're learning from people. And the other thing in that, um, and I think I'm on a tape with somebody quite a long time ago, and uh, I accepted I didn't know. And that sounds quite strange, but I just went, I don't know. And it was a phrase I used a lot with clients and people that came to, to speak with me that sought some help from me. And they said, well, what are you going to do for me? Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm taking you on to, to help me. 
you, you must know what you, you can do because I've explained uh -huh. the issues that I yes, have. Yes. I said, no, I genuinely <clears throat> don't know what's going to happen. And to this day, I feel the same. I've just done a 10 minute clip on video mm -hmm. for the company. I didn't know what I was going to say when it started. And everything I've done in the trainings in the company, whilst the, what we do is quite clear and strategically has, has a purpose of development, I never take one note. Mm. Um, in the talks that I do, I work straight from. And I'm grateful uh, for whatever it is mm. that gives me that uh, power. But I think it's the freedom of me that does that. And I don't regard myself, I'm, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but when you can talk for freedom, there's so much you can access, so much you can access. And part of that is best, somebody told me once, they said, if you take a grain of sand from your brain, the size, just, just you imagine a part of your brain, the size of a grain of sand, which is minuscule, it can store all the movies that were ever made in the world. Mm. And I thought, well, I ain't going to try and figure that guy out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to live with whatever it gives me. And not knowing, to me, isn't a burden. Before, I thought I knew. <laughs> and I didn't. I think I can make you like a personal reference. Uh, I think, right? Because one, <laughs> one thought I have is I have like the my notes here. <laughs> So I often feel I somehow like need notes in order to create like the bigger or the larger framework. But I also kind of recognize the feeling of saying, I don't know, I have no idea. And that's something I've been saying more and more lately, actually, because I think I'm also coming from a background where I thought it's very valuable to know everything. And I wanted to be the guy who knew everything. But the more, you know, the years advance and everything, I start to feel that actually, I I don't know. I, I have no idea. There's so much I don't know. And maybe there's a freedom in it, actually. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a view <clears throat> people have to do with what is particular to them. But could it be that the less you know, the more you'll learn? And because when yeah. you sit and say to somebody, See what I would have said to you uh -huh. six years ago. Of course you've got to take notes, man. You got to, you know that was the exactly. that was my way. Exactly. <laughs> or I would play with you yeah. verbally to draw you to into my yeah. you know sort of the the spy you're almost the spider to the fly yeah. come into my web yeah. and then I'd play. But no, I think everybody is their own way. I think if I write something down when somebody's talking, can I can I be really listening to everything they're saying? Because in a conversation, it's about the feeling as well. And it's about conversation. So if I'm writing down and you're talking, am I hearing you just or am I actually listening? Because I believe when somebody writes, they're only hearing. And I think listening is an entirely different concept. And I think it is. And that's what we need to do. And it's listening to understand rather than to reply. It's listening to sense and feel what that person is and what the view is. It's important. So maybe now, in a sense, that is what walk feeling is about, or run feeling, like you listen to your movement, you listen to your body, rather than just hearing, possibly, right? So it's more about listening to yourself, as I understand. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's a couple of phrases that spring to mind in that. I think one is that everybody that comes in through the door here at the centre is unique. And that is a person's power. And I'd, I'd love each and every person that listens to that. And I say it to each and every one of you right now, you are unique. There ain't another one of you. That is your power. You have, you have read my Instagram, I, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That is what I'm saying all the time. Yeah, well. Everybody is unique. And we have this inner power that you don't need to take notes if you just can speak freely as you are, as you feel. Just yeah. speak. Be aware. The song, the song that springs to mind and that is Let It Be. Mm. Right? And I, I out here and I play it and uh, they tell me I'm not too bad a singer, but I say let me be. And that is so true because we're imprisoned in something some of us didn't create. We're imprisoned and constantly looking at what we're not rather than what we are. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that walk feeling and run feeling 
is that there's two things I could say in that. One, when somebody walks into the door, you're unique. We ain't met you or anyone like you before. And they feel that. The second thing is, I'm not going to talk about at this time and look at you and say, what's wrong? They'd spend too much time with me if they did that. What I'm going to do is say, do you know something? I see so many positive things. And if you took that into conversation or relationship, it's such a different place to start. And the next thing is we don't tell. We share. You, you, any conclusion we find has to be mutual. But that's founded on the fact that this talks some of the time. This mouth that I'm using right now on this podcast is talking a lot of the time. But this body that you're in, it talks all the time. And the fact is, what's your body saying to you? Because as John said, you know, the, the, the power that's in here, the things we remember that we never wrote down, is that not a clue? Do we need to write down as much? And when we listen, you know, if the people listening to this, when's the last time you listened to your body in truth? When's the last time you really listened to your partner? When's the last time you listened to your children? When the last time you listened to somebody that was speaking to you in the purest way, in the neutrality of listening, not with a prejudice? By goodness, I had them, John. I had plenty of them. <laughs> right? I came from Glasgow. It was Rangers Celtic. I had prejudice, and I did. It was almost indoctrinated. Mm. And it's not cool. I had a view when I seen somebody walk towards me. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Uh -huh. and the delightful thing is neutrality, and the physiological and the psych are so linked, and we try and keep them no separate. attachments. Exactly. Yeah, we try, we try and keep them there. Yeah, friend. I've Same. done I've done work, uh, a lot of work over the past. I'll give you an example if you don't mind me sharing it. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. We we live in a world where the the psychological problems that people are suffering from are becoming quite significant. And sadly at this time, and I'll take this opportunity to wish all your listeners all the very best at this challenging time for they, them and their loved ones. But at this, at this time when you look at where different things are in the world that we live in just now, you begin to understand that neutrality is a positive thing. You begin to understand that listening a positive thing. If we listen at this time to the message that's being said to us, we're not doing so cool in this world. Right? Why what's going on is that it's tragic and there's a lot of people in a lot of pain, but the world's going to be very different at the end of it. And for individuals, every time is maybe this is time to reassess where you are and who you are. But when you talk to the psychological and the physiological example. Children, uh, I can't remember the statistics from the UK, but it's staggeringly bad, are suffering from depression at a very early age. And if I go to you as a child and you're 16 and I say, hey, let me talk to you about your mental well-being, what's your likely answer to me? I don't know, like doubtful or sceptical? Or... Absolutely. If I talk to you as an adult and I say, look, Come on, I want, I want to talk about you psychologically and mentally. Are you going to do it with open arms? Me, always. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm always. Wrong person. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah. So, but many people don't. Many people are challenged by it. And one of the issues I have, one of the keys to your mental well-being is to being able to talk about the issues that you have. Yeah. If I go and yeah. talk to you about your phys physiological well-being, yeah, that's, that's that usually year. easier. Yeah. yeah. But what if, through talking about your physiological well-being, it releases you psychologically? Exactly. And that's exactly what happens. And, it is, and it's proven in various scientific tests that have been run in people. People become free. Because yeah. if you take tension in the body, yes. 
you can see somebody walking. You know the, the thing I was talking about, your body talks. Yes. When you leave here today, go out and look at people and you'll see them, you'll go, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's angry. Mm. That's closed. Yeah. Yes. That's open. Yes. That's in a hurry. Yeah. That doesn't care. That's not interested in what's going yeah. on around it. Yes. So it's talking all the time. Yeah. So when you get people and you say, well, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to walk with you physiologically. And I'm going to make your movement more relaxed and more fluid, which releases tension. Is that going to help you here? What do you think? Yes, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So we need to move more. But if we can do this and utilize that in a way in groups, right, looking to physiological freedom, we could find the key to giving people the confidence to face the issues that they perceive they have. And I think, again, that's critically important. The results we have in here with individuals who come into courses or training, the change in them is phenomenal. You can look in the website, the testimonials, you know, they're phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And what you think, well, we're magicians. No, we just listen. What we're, 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 we're geniuses. No, we accept these people for who they are and we work with them. But hey, you try and hide. Mm -mm. We don't let you hide. But we don't pull you. It's akin when you take children, and I don't know if either any of you have any of the two you have children. Yes, I have kids. Children. Kids. Well, you can, this you can relate to this. When a child walks behind you, they've got the hump. They are not happy. When a child walks in front of you, they know where they're going. Yes. I know where I'm going, Dad. If they walk beside you, they're with you. They are in harmony with you, and that's where the juice happens. True? Yes, yeah, that's true. That's exactly what we do at Walk Freely. And if you take a step ahead in front, we don't say, hey, where are you going? They'll come back. In their way, in their time. Because you have to allow them to do that. Because that's where the learning is. It doesn't become, oh, Eric told me, or John said. I learned. That is important to have that freedom to be yourself. Even if you are rushing or if you are not rushing, you must be you in that state you are in that time. Mm -hmm. That is so important because when you are not allowed to be who you are, then you cannot rec recognize who you are. That's the thing. But isn't it the strangest thing that if you said to most people, well, I could ask you, I could put you on the spot right now. Do you love yourself? Be honest with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You've answered it in a way. You've answered mostly, it. most, mostly, but I, I don't, I don't think I could say maybe a hundred percent. Right? How about you? Uh one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Okay. One hundred percent. I'm not going to ask him any more questions. You don't ask this guy. You can <laughs> ask me. <laughs> Never kiss me the answer. I won. Yeah. No, but it's an honest answer. But many, many people. Right, uh, there's two things. One, I've, I've done to I do, I do uh, talks, and we have a bit of fun in them as well. We enjoy them. And I will say to people that the human body is a gift. Yes. Do you all agree with it? Yeah, yes. I agree with it. And good. How many of you treat that gift? with the respect it deserves and in accordance with the power it can deliver to you and the potential it can deliver to you. All I can say, you don't see many hands. And then the second thing in that is when you talk to people and I say, hey, what's good about you then? I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> what's good? I'm not asking you that. <laughs> what's good about you? People invariably yeah. Um, um, yeah. Um, yes. Please don't talk about me. I'd rather not. But if you say, listen, what do you not do right? Yeah. What do you do wrong? Mm. Or the conversation's free. Mm. And what you refer to is so true. There's a thing in belief. Move the words about. Be life. Believe. Be life. Yes. And that is a clue. It is Even in what we are, mm -hmm. human being. So you say human being, I'm a human being. 
Yeah, okay. Let's take the human away for a second. The second word is what? Being. Ah, there's a clue. How many people take the time to just say being? Because mm. being is the answer. Yes. Being to be who you are, you discover your potential. Being who you are, you listen and learn in a natural way. Sadly, we develop habits culturally, yeah. or parents, or whatever. We develop them, not even ours. Yes. But just being. And what we help people, what I work with people in a psychological way, that is what we try and get to, is that neutrality and that balance and sense of who they are. And I can tell you over the years, that can be hugely challenging because people put a lot of barriers on. Mm. And I call it this guy. Yeah. I call it the little devil in the shoulder. Where you get memory and thought get together in here mm. and they have a party. <laughs> but do you know what? You're not invited. But you've got to clear up the mess. And I say, hey, just be, because that's the power. I'm limited. I accept it. I'm not perfect. I accept it. I am who I am. But the, the notion this is driven from, is it driven from the notion of wanting to be liked? Is it? Do you think? If it's driven from the yeah, notion this, this of wanting to, wanting to be, be liked. liked. I yeah. want to be liked. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of things is because many people want to have credit for something. They want, they want fame, they want uh, money, they want whatever they want. They want love, but they cannot have that. They must have it inside. That is the thing. When you are aware about yourself, about your human being, mm -hmm. uh, to be, then you can just relax. You don't need to force anything. You don't need to do anything. Yes. Just be. It can also be, I'm thinking it can also be fear. Right? Like of fear course. to find yourself. Yes. In a sense. Oh, because yeah. maybe you need, you, you feel you, you, you letting go of the collective and the others and your friends and maybe... I don't know your family, and instead you you have to be a part of like in order to be part of this community, you have to behave in a certain way or certain aspect or something. But the thing As is, well. you cannot be liked by everybody, so it's mu it's better to be yourself. It's much easier. Well, it's the strangest thing. Many people want to be liked. It's important to them yeah. to be liked, and they say, if you say to them, you say, well, yeah, I want to be liked. So I said, if I come up and said, yeah, I like you, how would you react? Or be suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, like what? And, and, and that, that's the human instinct. And in yeah. relationships, the woman says, you, you, you don't tell me you love me. So a day later you say, do you know what? I really love you. You're just saying that. Yeah. Do you understand? And, yes. and it goes the other way as well. And the interesting aspect in that, you know, we talk about listening to the body, is listening. How many times do we say to people, I know what you're going to say? No, you don't. And then if we constantly do that to a person, be it our partner, be it our friend or be it our kids, don't be surprised if you look at them one day and don't know who they are. Because you didn't listen. Yes. And listening is the gift that comes to us in the womb at first. And it's the last thing to leave us. Mm. And it's one of the greatest gifts you can ever have. And to listen with your eyes and your ears and your mind in neutrality and without prejudice is truly the gift you have, but we don't use it. So how come, maybe like in a sense you, you did answer it though, but why, why is it so difficult for us? Why is it so difficult for us to listen to ourselves and mm. with the people around us? But it's funny because we get we, we have groups of 16 that come in, they come in for three days at different times and they come in over periods of time and when they do initially um, I, I take the group and I'll say they're expecting and they're expecting normally to them conventionally they're seeing a teacher pupil right I take that right off the board right away I said listen I've got this thought experience that I want to share with all of you that I need your help right so we're going to do this together and if you think there's learning from what I share with you, that's cool. But be equally aware, I'm going to learn a lot from you. And I'm going to free in how I speak. And I want you, if you can, to feel the same. It might take a wee while, 
but don't worry about it, I just want you to be. Because to me, even though I've got that group, and that's a group as a number, I'm dealing with different individuals within it. And some of the things that happen are extraordinary, because I never think. I don't overthink. I think if you overthink, you sink. I just move as I am. And again, you know, the testimonies on the website are reflective of that, I'm told. I've, I've read some of them, but I don't read them a lot. That's the beauty. And what we, what we fear, how can you fear something if you don't know its consequences? And in that who you are, we all, irrespective of who we are, on a football pitch, as a performer, as a person, we live a moment and we go, wow, that was great. And we go, that was us. And if you want a clue, look at children. They operate with freedom. They operate in the freedom of what life is. They have no prejudice, just total and utter joy. You can go in the tram down there, walk in and you're covered in rain, your girlfriend's just finished, your boyfriend's just finished with you, you feel the bank manager's phone, you ain't giving you no more money, you know, and you think the world's going to end. You sit down and this little three-year-old child looks up and smiles at you. The world changes. Yeah. And that's the reality. And I think the cruelest we are to anything, I think in the majority, is to ourselves, which inhibits our development. And we work with physiological freedom. We can take a runner in here. Right? I had what a triathlon in here on, on Friday and he said and he was <laughs> he was quite a tough guy and he had, a, he had paid a strong opinion. And I said, so how much are you potentially accessing your movement? How much do you think you're taking the feet as but accessing in the feet? 80. 20 minutes later after doing things with him, and again, I don't tell him, that's because we don't do that in here. I said, so can I ask you that question again? There was a silence. Very. I said, yeah, I tend to agree to that. That's the potential you're working with. That's the potential you can access. So how much are you of a person? How much of you to today? How much of you do you access? And what potential are you missing? When I work with people, that's what I work with. Because I don't want them to be denied what I was. I don't want them to be denied that potential. And if I can help with them to discover that, be it in sport, be it in their personal life, I want to do it. I understand that. That is a nice uh, way of saying it. Thank you. You're welcome. I think it's very exciting. It's, it's, it feels like when we, we build our businesses and we are our coaches and we help each other and we help others as well. And and what we do as well with, with the podcast and what I do is kind of to help people maybe realize or see their full potential. Like to see, ah, there is something more in me, there is something more I can actually do. I can access more resources. I can do this. I don't know, like build this company, improve this relationship, do the half marathon, do an Ironman. What they do is not that important. It's more that they see that it's possible. And I think that's what we actually are trying to do with the podcast as well, right? And also interesting, <laughs> like our thing we have going, John, as well. Like, like we, we have the mental aspect and we have the movement aspect as well. And we also have the spiritual yeah, totally. uh, holistic way of being because you have this awareness, the mind and the body, but you have also this grounded yourself, your inner self, like you are talking about this inner self that is there always, that is not, um, it's not connected with the mind, with the, with the body, it's, it's something else that is there, that is your intuition, that is something beyond feelings. You copy me what I mean? Yeah, I, I get, I mean, you said, you know, what you do. I think it's more important how you do it. Yeah. I think that, that that's more, more critical. Mm. And it's, it's how you do it in a freedom. And then the point that you make with regard to that, 
I made a decision a long time ago. I, I, um, in that what I do, um, and again, this is borne out in testimonies. They tell me I'm very good at what I do. I get slightly embarrassed by it, and I do, factually, for whatever yes, reason. Yes, you're blushing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do a bit. But but the bottom, the, the line in it is when you when you look, somebody says, well, what did you learn? I've re I read one thirty nine page book. Now, I'm not advocating people don't read books, but you give me 250 books, I'll make them into two chairs so I can talk to people. I, you know, when we, I get a guy that came in here to run a marathon, and he says, look, I've been told medically, it's marathons in three weeks, I can't run because of my knee. Come on, let's have a look. He felt hope in a moment, really, because we talked about the positive. You've got answers. No, we will discover answers together. He phoned from the finishing line as he crossed it. Such was his gratefulness. And he said, I've finished it, not a problem. But you're never going to believe this. On you go. I ran it 30 minutes faster. <laughs> 30 minutes faster. We had a guy who was in here who was in chronic pain, couldn't move 28 years of age. And he told me afterwards, he said to me, he said, what gave me hope is how I was treated from the minute I went in the door. It just gave me hope. And that's not something I had experienced in three years. Mm -hmm. And he had bone against bone. Yeah. And that is constant pain, guys. And that was in March last year. Mm -hmm. Name's Henrik. And you know what he did in November? He walked from Parma to Rome for charity. Mm -hmm. Discovering your freedom is not just a physiological thing. People talk about the inner being. When I look at these things and I look back, I met many people who were analysing life and trying to define it. I don't. I just accept it for the gift it is, and I'm grateful for it. As to understanding its power, Einstein couldn't do it. I left school at 15, so I certainly ain't got no chance. So I live it. And I look as everything as being in its totality. You're a gift. You're unique. And it's to live that gift and belief. Not just for you, but for those around you and those you can influence. But it's being able to listen to people. Now, I walked in Gothenburg on, on Saturday with Jenny, who works here. And I'm walking along and I seen a guy outside a cafe and things are obviously quiet. And I don't know why. But I turned around, it wasn't, it wasn't one o'clock yet, and I turned around, and he was outside, he was trying. I says, how are things for you, just now? And he looked at me with sadness in his eyes, and he said, they're tough. And I says, you know what, you seem a really lovely guy, and I bet you're really good at what you do. He says, I think I am. I says, I think it will turn around, and I really, really do. And it's so lovely to meet you, and I hope you don't mind me saying what I did. And I'm going to come back here next week for a coffee. And he said, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I was in a supermarket with the guys the other day and I watched a woman, and it was embarrassing actually, and I don't speak Swedish. And there was a woman who had a stick and she, you know, you go through these trolleys at the conveyor, you know, the, on the checkout. And she's there, literally one, two, three, four people pass her and she's struggling because mm -hmm. she's got a stick and she's an old woman. And I said to Jenny, look, go over there. She was so grateful. That's the way we need to be for each other. Because these people are the learning. And factually, if you're kind to somebody, this is a fact, scientific, it helps your immune system. And that's the science, that's the gift we get back from whatever this, this power is. But for me, in your totality, it's yeah. you. And whatever it does, I'm grateful for. I go running in the school of Sklagen, whatever it's called in the morning. I still spin. You know, I'm 65 in August. And I love it. Mm. I love how it feels. I love the freedom that it does. I say good morning to every single person I pass. And that makes my run a joy. And if I didn't pass people, yes, and I'm hoping it will catch on in Sweden. I hope so also, here. because I'm uh, doing that a lot also. Yeah. Saying, hi, how are you? person that I meet and I'm always saying to people be nice just say hi 
doesn't it's cost anything. You're just sending good it's energy. Lovely, but they, they want you to get back. It was quite funny. I was near the end of them. I, there's this thing called Heart Attack Hill. Yeah. <laughs> so by the time I get to it, you know, I'm, and I do 50s and 100s, so by the time I come back, I'm yeah. pretty. But Heart Attack Hill's the finish, so I've got a bit of thinking. You have a bit of thinking about that when you're coming round the corner. Mm. And there was a, an older fella in the doorway, and he just looked quite sad. And I started singing, Oh, what a beautiful morning to yeah. him. And he, lo- he just started smiling and laughing. Yes. And uh, I just went, Wow. And he was really said, Tack, which is thank you, I think. Yeah. Mm. And, and you go on. And that's not, that's not being religious, it's not being anything, it's no. being who you are. And it's being cognizant of this. This time, I think people will become more aware of who they are. Yeah. But the thing I have to see in Sweden, I don't get many good mornings back. No, <laughs> no. See in Scotland, oddly <laughs> enough. See in Scotland, right? See in yeah, Scotland. Yeah. See when you go in Scotland and you said somebody says good morning, and you don't respond, they'll turn around and go, "Excuse me." Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yes. Are you okay? No. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you didn't say good morning back. It, it just makes sure you're all right. Yeah. That's the way we work. Yeah, I'm thinking that is a really interesting. That is a social structure. You have that social structure in Scotland and here in Sweden. They are just looking down. They don't even want to meet your eyes many times. Well, you weren't you weren't you weren't born to look down. You were born to look up for a reason. Yeah. Your eyes were there to take in. You two years because you meant to listen more. Yes. And in these eyes are up here. If I reduce the, the where my head is, I'm not going to see so much. Exactly. And and as I say to you, people can access the potential in themselves. We work with people physiologically in running. Somebody comes in, we've got so we've had footballers here, we've got a golfer we're working with just now. And what happens to them is phenomenal. But they have to make that choice. Right? If I tell you, if you go to the doctor, the doctor says, right, doctor, you're going to give me an answer. Here, that isn't the case. No, we're going to find an answer together. And I just wonder what would happen if that approach was taken in general medical things, mm. how much more significant would the outcomes be? How much more would the person take the responsibility? It wouldn't take any more time, that is for certain, because they would understand it in the language we learn. Some of the metaphors we get out there, I said, so how would you describe that? Are absolutely brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. You know, and it that's the joy. And the way I explain in here, I love Christmas because I just think wherever you are in the world at Christmas, everybody just seems that wee bit happier and a yeah. wee bit accepting of each other, right? And they smile at each other. Yeah. So I think if I wanted a job, right, I think I'd love to be Santa. Wouldn't it be a great <laughs> job? Just giving people what they wanted. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, guys. I am Santa. <laughs> I was just going to say that you are Santa. Bit. No, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. And each and every one of the coaches in here in Santa. Yeah. Because in the 364 days they work here, that Santa doesn't, they are delivering a gift to a person that they get to open. It doesn't run out of batteries, it doesn't outgrow them, and they keep it. And I think people should be opening the gifts of discovering. Sometimes you need help. Sometimes yeah. you need to talk to somebody. Or you can get stuck in your habit. For me, the habit, this is this geezer. Yeah, yeah. This is not the good guy. And it will play with you and it keeps you through insecurity. Mm. Why not discover freedom? Why not explore what freedom can mean to you and the potential it can bring to you mm. in your language? It's not in that other person's language. It's in your language. Because yes. it has to be, because you sustain it. You keep it and you take it away. That's what happens in here. Yeah. I, I can prefer to that what you're saying. S- many times we give our, away our keys to our, our freedom, to other people to choose to handle our keys. But you have all your keys inside, so you need to take them back. So you can open the gift and choose what it is in the gift. Or just live the gift. Yeah. I mean, it's like somebody knocking on a cell door. Boom, 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 boom. And you come along and say, let me out. Bum, 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 bum. Let me out. Eventually, come on and say, listen, it's not locked. It never was locked. 
But I've been here for 25 years. <laughs> yeah, no, but, 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 but again, again, if you, if you go that into, into a thing, habits, habits are compelling because that's where, that's where addiction are formed. Yes. And there's a thing in the brain called dopamine. Right, and mm. that's it. it's, it's not such a cool dude when you need it. Mm. Right, that's where addictions can develop. An interesting thing about it is a self thing. Dopamine's a self pleasure thing. The other fella called serotonin. That's happiness. You can have much of that as you want. Mm. But when you look at situations and you say to people, "You can, you you can live this. You 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 can do that." They say, "No," because of this. This fella gets used to that habit. And that habit's created through insecurity, potentially. Mm. It, it's created because of lack of self-belief. No. Not true. Not true. Not true. You are you. And you can beat that. You can, you, you, you can beat that habit. The reason you don't want to is because you're too used to it being around. And by the way, it's moved in. It's set up home. And it don't want to leave because it's having so much fun with you. And it needn't be that way. Look at each and every person that listens. Look at what you've got. Look at the foundation of what you have. Honestly, if you sit around, and I've done it out here, I sat people around and I said, right, and they walked to each other for two days. Second day, I said, right, I want you to see what your experience of that person is in a positive way. Yeah. There were some tears because people couldn't believe what they were told. <laughs> They've gone on from strength to strength to strength. People, we coaches that work with us, if I videoed in the beginning, and it, they, they change completely, right? In an incredibly positive way. Not because we tell them to. They made a choice. Yes. And they left something behind. And you just say to them, that's freedom. And it's the exact same physiologically. Right? If you're walking and you're not getting a power, you've got back problems, knee problems, neck problems, headaches. Okay, let's discover. You've got some great things going on there. What can we improve? What do you think? Right, I'll explain some things to you. People talk about stress. It's an example. Stress, stress. It's in every newspaper. Mm. We all talk about stress. Can you see stress? Can you no. see it? We cannot even see our thoughts. Right? <laughs> if you take tension. Yeah, I'm just yeah. tensing my arm right now. There it is. Yes. So what kills me, stress or this? Tension. What's the killer? Tension. It's a delivery yes. mechanism. Th that is the thing we we allow us uh, to take in the stuff outside and that becomes tensions in your body. Yeah, of course, because I mean, ten tension in your body is an, what we do in here. We, we, together with people, develop their understanding of the relationship to tension. Yeah. You know, it's like a motorway, there's four lanes. If I cut it to two lanes, it's not so cool. Traffic's not flowing. Tension is the exact same in the body. Mm -hmm. If you watch somebody, I mean, Zinedine Zidane is a footballer, talking about two games. Why was that game so bad? And then when you played against Brazil, that was amazing. You were just, you could have taken three of your teammates off and you'd have still have won the game. I tried in that game. It wasn't me, it wasn't relaxed. And it's, that is a strange thing to kind of understand. But if I try to be funny, I'm not funny. Yes. If I try to be intellectual, which I could never do <laughs> here, yeah. I guess what, I'm not mm. going to be intellectual. If I just am who I am. Yes. And if you can work with individuals, I've had people who uh, didn't believe they could run, they now run. I've had people who thought they can't do that, they now do it. Mm. Not because of me, because of them. <laughs> a moment of silence. That is nice. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I was thinking before, like a reference, you know, like 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 you, you told about the the playground outside with the children, and they are more natural. They move more naturally. And with the comparison, if you take like a Swedish bus at eight in the morning, and everyone is on their way to work, and the energy can be so low. People are heading to their office, to the 9-to-5 job, and no one is talking to anyone else. They're all in their cell phones. It's like it's a completely different setup, right? It's a completely different One story. One person can change that. Yeah, 
If I went on that bus and say, hey, good morning, how are you doing? Exactly, you it, switches, doing? it switches immediately. It and and then, as you mentioned as well, in Scotland, people say good morning and hello. I'm half Spanish and we have a house in Spain, it's the same thing. People actually talk to each other. Well, they do very, 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 very much. The culture is based on, a, on information. Yeah. I mean, where I come from in Lewis initially, I mean, there weren't a lot of people, it was simple people, so writing wasn't a thing for them. So their communication was verbal mm -hmm. communication. Mm -hmm. So your ability to be able to listen to somebody, that's where you got your, that's where you learn yeah. from, that's mm -hmm. where you develop from. And I think if you look at anything, there is an onus in people like yourselves, like myself, like the people in here, to communicate simply, but to understand the language of those that listen. And allow it to be their language, their flexion, their ability, their pace of learning, not mine. Because that's where that's the mutuality of that is where success happens. So you can't you can't invite feeling. You can't say right, I'm gonna it don't work. Connection creates feeling. Mm. It just automatically filters in and then you discover because you listen. You don't just hear, you listen. Yeah. What do you think about the subconscious mind? I haven't got a clue about it. You don't <laughs> have a clue about it. No, I don't. I don't, and I don't mean that to be flippant. No, no, I, no. I don't. I never. I, you know, I dealt at one time at the beginning of this journey. I dealt with people who were highly intellectual and into mm. uh, mind consciousness, thought all the aspects yes. of and the dimensions, paradigms, all this sort of yes. things. When I watched them interacting, be outside the groups, they didn't. When I watched them interacting. I didn't see any joy. Mm. When I watched them interact, I didn't feel any freedom. Mm. I was very noisy. I've got to do it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, it didn't make me very popular at that time. No. But the bottom line is, is life is simple. It, it was is. made simple for you. And I leave science for the scientists. And, you know, they haven't figured it out. That there is whatever you, you some people said my brother said to me as a writer he said to me he said that uh, do you know you have a faith and I said I don't know what you mean mm -hmm. and he said but well, you've got a faith and I said yeah I think I have right and there's a faith in life and a belief in something I don't care what it is but the one thing I do know is when I when I go out there and I speak to people I have had a couple in just before you just well before you arrived about relationship I don't know what I'm going to say to them and I don't care whether you like me or not and I don't mean this disrespectfully I don't care what I do is I share and see where somebody is and feel it and I learn mm -hmm. you learn about people and in, in the individuals everybody that listens or sees these things it's easy to say be but sometimes you need help I, I, I got help and it helped me hugely. I listened to people and <laughs> it wasn't easy, right? <laughs> but uh, what we're doing, we're developing a, a kiddies clinic in here so children come in, because if you look at kids' movement, it's, it's getting worse. And we're also going to develop post all this that's going on just now an adult clinic, which will be free. The company will be connected to a charity because we want to give something back. Yeah. But every one of these people that we come into contact with, it's their language that's important, not mine. Can it, can it be that sometimes we overthink things, we overcomplicate things, we overanalyze <laughs> no. things, uh, and, yeah. and that's the journey in itself. And while, while the truth is closer to being more, you know, like in a simpler language, maybe more feeling or anything. The truth, the, 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 you know, the, the, there's, a, there's a phrase that comes to mind is the truth. You can avoid it for as long as you want, but you'll never prevent it. So to have belief in it is important. But not confusing personal truth with truth. So if you then say to somebody, you know, any individual, right, they have an opportunity. You know, life presents itself. It's a big game that goes on. There's a there's there's a lot of things you can't control. So if you look at it and say, Well, I can't control the outcome. I always felt that intellectuals thought they could, right? And many have tried, right? But you can influence it. And if you accept you influence it, then that's your power. 
you know, you as an individual are unique. So what you do, so if you're limiting yourself, it's like if somebody runs to the outside of the foot or don't use the full foot, the full foot. Yeah. An elephant, seven tons, and you can't hear it walking because it lifts its foot. Hmm. Right, but you can't hear it, which is phenomenal. We roughly, we had the same. We watch children walking, they do the same. But we develop habits, feel like this. But if you use the total foot, that's the power. That's where the power comes from. But I ask you, in the next days, go and look at people where they walk. You'll see them off the side, you'll see them off the heels. And everything. Yeah. I've seen two people that do it. Usain Bolt's one of them, by the way. Um, he uses all his power from his little toe. But for anybody to access who you are, why don't you start doing it now? Why don't you just start looking at what you are rather than what you're not? There's a question for our <laughs> listeners out there. Find yourself. Well, Work towards yourself. Accept yourself. Well, it's to accept. If you accept who you are, yeah. then, you know, we're not perfect. No. None of us have not made anybody perfect. No. But you accept who you are. Yeah. And that's your circumstances. Listen, if you accept yourself, you've always got you. Yeah. If I go out there to talk about something, I do talking for 150 people. Um, if I lose what I'm talking about, I've always got me. Yes. And that, that's the thing. And if you go in a football park to be you and be confident what you are, you know, I always used to give footballers a hard time when they said sorry. You know, you made, you played a pass, you went mm. sorry. I said, did you mean to play a bad pass? No. I said, well, don't say sorry then. And, and again, the other thing, you asked about fear earlier on. The word mistake springs to mind. Right? I would ban that. I would take that out of the language. Because I don't think there is such a thing as a mistake. I think there's only learning. Yes. I don't think you lose. As Nelson Mandela said, I think you learn. Um, and learnings... Learning's through people, and it's through circumstance and situation. Yeah. But the, the greatest thing you bring to that is yourself. And each and every individual has a value. Because if you turn around and say, could I be better as a footballer? Most would say yes. Well, why not then? Maybe now's the time to discover mm. how much better you can be. Mm. Can you be better as a person? The answer is yes. Why not discover it? Why not live the gift you are? Because it's it's a gift. Yeah, I agree totally with you. We have this gift that is called life. Correct. Yeah. Live it. So we should really live it fully. Yeah. And explore more things and more skills to learn. But from a simple way, John. Huh? In a simple way, <laughs> not a scientific way. No, I'm simple. not a scientific guy. No, no. But what what would he say is is it? Somebody once said to me, it's layers of an onion. I said, no. Yeah. No, it's not layers. It's not layers. You're, you're one. You are just who you are. Yeah. And accept what that is and live it. Yeah. And then, uh, and when, when you say we're one, you're, you're whole. Man, man, many seeks holiness in another person. Yeah, when I meet that girl or that man, then we'll be, become two half and we'll be whole. No. You are whole before. You should be whole. You should be you. Then you can uh, develop something really nice if you are yourself. Yeah, I think the thing is there is that once, you know, when you talk to people, and I've dealt with relationships, people who've got issues in relationships, and it's always fascinating because in some cases, you actually turn around and say, the question I asked you earlier, I said, do you love yourself? And if people hesitate, that's an answer. And it's, uh, yes. As a most people do, to be fair. And you can then say to them, well, if you don't love yourself, do you really know what love is? Mm. If you don't love yourself, how can you love that next person? Mm. You understand? So when relationships come in, then I think if, if I had a magic wand, I would say to people, be friends first. Laugh. Laugh together, <laughs> live together, and be friends. Because that's the thing you'll come, come down to at the end. Yes. Because it's who you are. It's not because society said, look, you should get married, you should have children. 
look at the person and say, that's it. I mean, the, I think it's the Greeks have a great, they've, they've, they've got love seven levels, grandos being the most basic. Mm. The highest level is the love a mother has for another child that's just born, which is absolutely selfish, selfless, you know, it's, it's totally and utterly unrequited, condition, no conditions, right? I think sometimes when we're in relationships, we start bringing in conditions and we start mm. changing them. And again, that's the thing about being being free and very, very quickly we stop listening to each other. We go back to listening. Listen to the body, listen to yourself. Listen, none of us are perfect. The guy that you see who's the big guy sounds confident as hell that's in there. The woman that's confident mm. is strutting her stuff, all her makeup. Believe me, they're not what they appear in a lot of occasions. Mm. You you be who you are, you know, because you've got a gift. You're a diamond. Let it shine. Don't cover it in mud. Let it glitter. Don't put it in your pocket. Because people learn from everybody. And that's the key to life. The freedom's key. The freedom to be you. You'll fall off the bike. You get up. You'll, you'll do a mistake. No, there's no mistake. There's only learning. Yes. I and totally agree. Simple. And if we could teach our kids that. But I'm worried about them now. Because all this... Yeah. Dating, dating, dating nowadays. You just go. Whoosh, whoosh. Mm. I mean, society's changing. But each individual that listens to this, the world needs you and all your potential. And do you know why it does? Because you were given it for a reason. It was to use it. You know, unwrap it and get living it. Now. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we have uh, one last question. Do you want to take it, my friend? I can absolutely take it. We have one final question. Um, and we ask this for everyone who visits our podcast as a guest. And is basically this. Are you living your dream life, Murdo? One million percent. I, <laughs> couldn't, I could not be happier. Honestly, I swear. Uh, I don't... I used to have a Maserati, a big house, money. Uh, all my stuff was stolen. I lost everything. Yeah, I'm happier now than I've ever been at any point in my life. And I am. Yes. I love it. Yes. I love it. I love. I love it and live it. And uh, I'm. You know. I. I wish I was younger, but I'm glad I'm the age I am, and I'm going to live it till the day I drop, doing what I do, and the way I am. Mm. Really. I'm really grateful that you took your time and your life to sit here and talk about this. No, listen, the gift, the, the opportunity is the gift. Mm. And, you know, I, I just wish all your listeners, yeah. whoever listens to this, thank you for taking the time to listen. Yes. Uh, I hope in anything that I've shared with you, there was something. Uh, because I found from people, that's what I've learned. And I wish you two guys every success in all that you do, both personally and business-wise. And thank you for your time and thank you thinking that I was of a quality that you wanted to give you this yeah, opportunity thank you I think you. it's been a, a pleasure a, a pleasure really and also for the listeners here if you are in the Gothenburg area and you are curious about meeting Murdo uh, feel free to come to Walk Feeling Run Feeling yeah well listen just, just again anybody it doesn't matter the question Walk Feeling we're in Mongol yeah. Run Feeling give us a shout speak to you we'll speak yeah. to you Always get time. Always get time for people. Always, always, always. Yeah. Good. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for <laughs> this podcast today. It's been an excellent experience. And thank you. And if you have any questions, reach out to us, me or, or John Andreas. If you are curious about coaching or primal or ancestral health and everything that we're actually talking about. So have an awesome day. Take care and listen to your inner voice. Yes. And be and be <laughs> <laughs> and be happy bye <laughs> oh.